Mr. Nathanson, I'm not going to lie, you make science pretty cool. Mr. Nathanson, you are so irritating. Mr. Nathanson, can you please stop dancing? You are embarrassing me so much right now. <laughs> Mr. Nathanson, is Drake really your cousin? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Nathanson, do you realize you don't even match right now? <laughs> Mr. Nathanson, I can't do this anymore. Do you think anybody would miss me if I was gone tomorrow? Before I started medical school, I was lucky enough to teach middle school science just six miles south of here in the South Shore neighborhood of Chicago. Um, while I learned to love my students like family, despite my few gray hairs that might imply that it was, I faced some of the hardest years of my life. Um, all those quotes were real, by the way. The good, the bad, and the ugly. I quickly learned that teaching was a profession of service, and anybody who's been in service before might realize this impulse that I have to, in every single moment, give 110% of myself to my students. Um, you know, I during this time, I wanted nothing more than for my students to achieve socially, emotionally, and academically. But I was young. I was a 23-year-old, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, green person that came in and I had this mindset that I needed to save my students from their situations that I saw as stifling. And I learned quickly that this savior mindset did nothing but hold them back, just as much as anything else in their lives. Although this is a pretty fun picture, uh, it is a fair representation of truly how tough the early years teaching were for me. <laughs> um, I did everything. I wrote full page homework critiques on 120 homework assignments a night, worked 16 hour days, called home every night to update parents on how their students were doing. You named it, I tried it. But grades kept slipping, standardized test scores that determine your fate in Chicago kept falling, and my mental health soon followed. And one day, Miss A, who was a mentor of mine, saw just how badly I was struggling. And she pulled me into her room, kind of slapped me around a little bit. She said, Joe. And she never called me Joe. She always called me Mr. Nathans. And so I knew this was about to be some, some good knowledge. She said, Joe, find your value to yourself and find your value to your students. Stop trying to do too much for your kids. Find your value to yourself and find your value to your students. Stop trying to do too much for your kids. So I took that and I ran with it. I learned that my value to myself was working on my relationships more. It was working less. It was exercising, it was eating better. I learned my value to my students was slowing down, getting to know them, helping them realize their worldview through their own lens, telling them that I love them, telling them that I believe in them, telling them that I can trust them, This is not to say that I didn't fail, because if you were to ask my students today, they would surely remind you that I did, <laughs> each and every day. But that's okay, because the difference is I had a sustainable game plan to stick to now. I had something where I can most effectively and efficiently serve my students for the remainder of my time teaching. And with that mindset, adopting that mindset, owning that, I had many fewer students coming in and asking me if they'd be missed if they were gone tomorrow and many more students coming in and asking me, hey, Mr. Nathanson, do you think I could be a good doctor like you? And as I turn the page on teaching and serving my students, and I look forward to medicine and serving my future patients, I am fully committed to adopting this mindset, and I invite you to join me in doing the same. Thank you.